Welcome. Let's spend a few minutes, if it's OK with you, looking at fair trade as a development strategy for low income countries in particular. Now, one of fair trade's main objectives as a trading partnership is to achieve greater equity in international trade, particularly in farm products. Sales of fair trade food just before the pandemic reached just under 20 billion euros per year. That was up by 15 percent from the year before. And Fairtrade now supports nearly 2 million producers and workers in over 70 developing countries, arranging products from cocoa to coffee, from bananas to sugar. The biggest fair trade markets are the United States, the UK, Germany, Switzerland and the Netherlands. So the fair trade movement has been around for several decades now. They have a big commitment to social, economic and environmental justice. Have a think for a couple of minutes, maybe press the pause button on the video, jot down what you might think are some of the benefits to developing countries in particular of fair trade agreements. So what do we think? What are some of the advantages? Well, again, I suppose our focus will be poverty reduction. The issue is whether fair trade is an effective way of reducing the prevalence and the depth of absolute poverty. So the aim of fair trade, of course, is to improve the social and economic conditions of smallholder farmers and their workers, many of whom actually belong to the same family. So the idea is you set a, you offer a premium price, a better price for the farmers, a minimum price, if you like, for farm products, hopefully a living wage or a fair wage for workers. Uh, those higher prices can drive revenues and profits, which could fund small-scale capital investments, such as tractors and irrigation schemes, perhaps better storage facilities, and higher per capita incomes, in theory, allow more households to save a little bit of money. And the second advantage is that fair trade can help producers in those countries access new markets to dine at the rich person's table, if you like, uh, using an alternative distribution channel to the monopsonistically powerful transnational corporations. And so if that works, if you can access new markets and get a better price for your products, it can hopefully lift economic growth and aid sustainable development in developing countries. But of course, fair trade has its critics and there is also a need to evaluate the impact of fair trade. So again, take a moment on this one, maybe think about two drawbacks to developing countries of fair trade schemes. Well, here are two. One is that fair trade, although it reached just under 20 billion euros, actually in, in relative terms, that's pretty small. It's certainly well below 0.1% of global trade. So fair trade does reach millions of people, but actually it's, it remains a tiny fraction of the world trade. And that's because, of course, if you just grow cocoa or coffee or bananas, you know, the price you're getting, the profits you're getting from growing these things are very, very small, a tiny percentage of the, of the final price that we pay as consumers in high income nations. And you know, there's another argument that there's a cost of meeting fair trade standards. For example, if you're looking to achieve organic certification, then that requires certain use of land, might reduce actually farm incomes because your yield from your farm, your acreage, might be lower than if you use things like commercial fertilisers. So some studies have found that fair trade can help improve the livelihoods of farmers, reduce poverty of farmers and workers in developing countries. Others have argued that fair trade in risks increasing dependency on farming and it makes it more difficult for farmers to diversify their incomes. There perhaps should be a greater, uh, a greater focus on getting farmers to diversify or to move up the value chain. Don't just grow the cocoa and the coffee beans, but try to refine them, process them and then brand them. So it's all part of the, the wider picture. Now, whenever you get an exam question asking you to evaluate the effectiveness of anything, fair trade, for example, if the word effectiveness appears in the question, always try to include at least one alternative. So buffer stock schemes and farm subsidies, microfinance and microinsurance, uh, should we be offering direct cash transfers instead of fair trade prices to farmers? Should we be offering some form of universal basic income? Or is the secret in the long term to attract foreign direct investment? Into, into primary sectors. Always try to talk effectiveness by using at least one alternative strategy. Now, fair trade is an important issue and it's definitely worth revising ahead of your 
exam. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious. See you sometime soon.